1987, it was decided to retcon Jaws 3, thus saving the Jaws franchise. Oh well, the best laid plans. Whereas in Jaws 3, the beginning of the film more or less shows you what you're in for, at the beginning of Jaws the Revenge you're given the impression you're actually going to see a good film. The title sequence takes place over a camera work from the shark's point of view, set to an updated version of the Jaws theme tune, and it actually looks really sinister. Similarly, the scene of the younger Brody brother being killed by some unseen horror, intercut with people singing Christmas carols, is a real horror moment. And then it all kind of goes downhill. I don't know whether they just lost interest or the money ran out or something. Chief Brody, we're told, has now died after the events of either the first film or the second film, or whichever film this is supposed to be a sequel to, and it isn't long before the action moves to the Bahamas. Cue a lot of American actors with ridiculous sounding accents. This could have been quite a fun film, but instead Brody's widow just sobs and wails and is basically miserable throughout the entire film. It's kind of like EastEnders on Sea with a lot of melodramatic family dramas. If you've never seen EastEnders, then imagine the kind of things a tin pot government would show the public to keep their morale low. By far the best thing in this film is Michael Caine. True, he's not given very much to work with, but he still manages to inject some warmth and humour into what is otherwise a pretty miserable experience. During the recording of a commentary for this film, he actually walks out halfway through, saying he couldn't bear to watch any more of this crap. I don't know whether that's true or not, I just heard it. Not a lot of people know that. The older Brody brother is now an underwater marine biologist, despite having two childhood traumatic experiences involving sharks. Well, some people just like pain, I guess. The shark actually manages to arrive at the Bahamas, having travelled halfway around the world in no time at all. So folks, when you're going on holiday, forget about aeroplanes and ferries. It's travel by shark. A shark, it seems, is wants to take revenge for the killing of its brethren. In a way, it seems to be some kind of shark hitman presumably on the payroll of the Codfather. It attacks the Brody brothers' boat, then goes back into the depths in a pool of blood. Not quite sure why, obviously bugs bleed. At one point, Brody uses his oxygen tank like a jetpack to escape from the shark, rocketing upwards through the water, and strangely he doesn't get the bends. The bends is air bubbles in the blood, caused by a sudden change in pressure. Thank you once again, Professor Wolfkins. Another problem with this film is the pathetically low body count. The shark can't seem to kill anyone. At one point it grabs somebody, descends into the depths with them, strangely hovering above the water, and then a few minutes later they emerge once again, completely unharmed. Kind of like the end of a cartoon where the little circle fades and everybody's alright, boys and girls. The original ending to this film had to be redone. Originally the shark would have been impaled on the pole at the front of the ship and slid down it, but the effect just looked terrible, although this film has hardly been a special effects triumph so far. As the cast were already out of contracts, they had to substitute a makeshift ending. Basically, they just reused footage from the original film. Brody's widow has a flashback to her husband shooting the original shark, which she uh, never actually witnessed, and the shark explodes, such is the power of memories. There is nothing absolutely terrible in this movie to rival the special effects from Jaws 3. Unfortunately, there lies the problem. Jaws 3 was watchably awful, whereas this film is just boring. If you want shark action, then try the original Jaws. It's so much bloody rubbish! (laughs) 